we are on our penultimate sermon in our series, Not Mine. Can anybody tell me what penultimate means? Huh? No, it is not. I'm so sorry. It, it sounds as if it would be, wouldn't it? It does not mean four either. Uh, penultimate means next to last. Uh, it's a fancy way of saying it. I learned it like two or three years ago, and I rarely ever get a chance to say it. But I know of that. Next week is our final night of an hour series. Huh? Yeah, I know of it. So I finally had a chance to say it. So tonight is part four, but it is also our penultimate. It's just a fun word. Here, everybody, just say it one time really quick. See, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun word, isn't it? Or is it j just me? It may just be me. Anyways, but but it is. But tonight, I want to kind of remind us about some stuff of that has been said of in this series. But then I want to again push forward in it just a touch more. Um, now, I think I've said this every week, but I want to encourage you: if you miss any part of this this series, or if you miss any a Wednesday night up here, you can always go to our church's YouTube page, Ozark First I mean, yeah, Ozark First Assembly of God, and you can find our church's page there. I will say, last week's sermon is not on there because. The camera died, um, and so uh, uh, sometimes it just says, I'm done, and just stops halfway th th through a sermon, uh, and that happened uh, this past week, um, but if you miss any of our sermons, I encourage you, go back and watch those, not just because, oh, Scotty, who wants us watching them? No, I really do 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 think they help us a lot, of, and especially within this series as well. So this past week, we were talking about a person of who says, my life is not mine. My life is God's life 100%. I am nothing but a servant of him. The one thing that I have found of within everybody of who lives that life is a person who their, 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 their most important thing they do in life is to tell people about Jesus. Their goal in life is to tell as many people about Jesus and to bring them to him. It doesn't matter if they're a pastor, if they're a teacher, if they're a doctor, if they're a garbage man. It doesn't matter. That is the one thing that is the same of within all of these people. Everything else may be different, but no matter what, the main thing is telling people about Jesus. And tonight, I want to take this just a step further of by talking about this. And I'm not going to retread on anything I said last week. That recap is is the, the only thing that I will say again uh, from this this past week. But I think there are moments of in our life of where we think it's okay to take a break. I think there are moments of in our lives of where we think it's okay to Take a break from pressing ourselves and telling people about J J Jesus. It's okay to take a break uh, from fully 100% serving God. And a lot of times this comes of when life gets chaotic. See, I, I actually think it's really interesting of that I felt impressed during worship to come up and to talk about the, uh, the, uh, the things I did, knowing of what... I was speaking on this evening, but I think it's, I think even more of than what I'm teaching, I think it's God setting the stage uh, for what's happening throughout this entire sermon. Because there, there are moments of when life gets chaotic. Maybe I get tired. Maybe emotionally I am just done. Maybe mentally I am drained. And, and if I even looked at a piece of paper, it would be as if the words are just moving around on it. Maybe just, just I just can't go on anymore. And so I'm just going to take a break. I'm not going to look for those moments to tell people. I'm not going to be paying attention to the Holy Spirit uh, 
as he nudges me. I'm just going to act as if I don't hear God speaking because I'm just tired. I, 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 God, I'm sorry. I love you, but I just, I just can't go on. Now, let me preface what I'm about to say. I do think taking care of our emotional, mental, physical, spiritual health is very important. I do think of that there comes a moment of in our lives of where we do need to step back and just take a breather and a rest. But when the breather and the rest comes before telling somebody about Jesus, of when the breather or the rest comes before doing what I know God is telling me to do, that's when my life is not mine. That's when my life is mine. When we put ourselves before others, our life is not ours. Our life is not not ours. There it is. Because at that point, I'm, I, I am putting myself over other people. I'm putting myself over other people of that I know I should be helping, over, over, doing, uh, over those of who I know I ought to be serving in those moments. Because, going back to our second week, when the king, when the creator, when the forgiver asks us, I should be going. I should be doing it. No matter if I'm tired, no matter if I'm just done, no matter of if I'm just beat up, no matter of if I can't think straight, but of when the king tells us we should go. No matter what. But don't take just what I'm saying as the authority on this. This is in scripture. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul says this. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. We, we are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. And that is verses 8 through 10. But then in verses 16 and 18, Paul also says, that is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and that will last forever. So we don't stare at our tr 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 troubles. We can see right now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that are to come and that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Let's look. I want to talk about this really quick. I think what Paul is talking about, and I don't just think, I know what Paul is talking about right here. He says, we are pressed on by every side by our troubles. We are, we are perplexed. In other words, confused, drained mentally, I think is what in another way of putting it. We are hunted down. We get knocked down. Our bodies are suffering, is what Paul says. Those are just the struggle parts of it. Let's hear it again. Though we are pressed on every side, we are not crushed. Though it seems as if life is pressing against me, though it seems as if life has its foot on my throat and is slowly squeezing, it says, I am not crushed. I am perplexed, but I am not driven 
to despair. I may be tired. I may be confused. But yet I do not lose hope. I am hunted down. But I am never abandoned by God. It may seem as if everybody is coming against me. It may seem, it may seem for some of us at times of that people are, are physically or just of with their words coming against me constantly, but I am not abandoned by God. I may be knocked down by life. I may be physically knocked down. I may be physically beaten up b- because of who I am and what I do, but I am not destroyed. Life has not and will not destroy me, is what Paul is saying here. Why is this so important for us to understand? This is so important for us to understand these things because, as what Paul says, through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. In other words, when life gets tough, when the opportunity comes for me to throw in the towel and just say, God, I'm done. God, I need a break. God, put a sub in because I need to go and catch a breather. Paul says we can't give up. Paul says we can't give up. Why? Because though it seems as if mentally, emotionally, physically, I am being killed, Paul says we are still proclaiming through these difficult moments, we are proclaiming the gospel. And people are seeing the death of Jesus through what we are going through. And if they're seeing the death of Jesus, Jesus. And if I don't give up, and if I continue to press through, Paul says they will see the life of Jesus as well. In other words, Joseph may be going through hell on earth, but he never gave up. He pushed through. He never compromised his faith. His actions were never compromised. And when he came out on the other side of, the, of any issue going on, people love would say, he stood strong. He stood through it. Maybe the God of that Joe was talking about is really real because he helped him get through it. Or it might be, Look, I came through all of these things, not because of anything I did, but because of the love and the mercies of and the grace of that God has on my life. Even through our troubles, even through every difficulty of our life, guess what happens? We can still proclaim that God is a good God if I don't give up, if I push through, if I I fight through whatever is happening. Yeah, but Scotty, Paul's just talking. Paul's just saying these things. He's not. Y'all want to know what's happening in Paul's life around the time of him writing 2 Corinthians? Can anybody... Tell me without opening a Bible app. Because everybody's like, well, yeah, I can. Without opening a Bible app. What happened in Acts chapter 16? What happened in Acts chapter 16? It's a very famous story in Scripture. I'll give a hint. It involves demon possession and walls. Yeah, over here. The earthquake of in the prison is 100% correct. Paul, Paul and Silas and their team, they go to a new city. And the whole time Paul is preaching, there is this girl that is possessed by a demon and is a slave to people. And they make money off of the demon that is inside of her. Like, this is messed up because this demon tells the future 
And the entire time Paul and Silas are teaching, Paul, this girl is, behind, is, is following Paul the whole time, saying, this man knows the one true God. This man knows the one true God and is speaking of Jesus who died and rose again, mocking and taking the attention from Paul to herself the whole time. And the Bible says of that Paul, fed up of with this demon, commands it out of her. And so because her masters could no longer make money off of her, because their cash cow was gone, they had them thrown in prison, publicly beaten and flogged, and then put in chains. And then, the famous part, at midnight, Paul and Silas start singing praises, and the chains of not just them, but of every inmate in the jail broke off, every door in the prison opened. That happened. They leave that city, and then in chapter 17, they go to, I believe it is Thessalonica, and Paul again starts to preach. But the people get upset because what Paul is teaching is counter to what they believe. But there's other political issues of within what would happen of if other people of would get saved and follow God of instead of all of the uh, pantheon of the Greek gods. And so because of this, a riot in the city takes place. And the people are going nuts. The people take Paul and Silas again. And they're like, these men are trying to destroy our city. These men are trying to break down the fabrics of everything we know and understand. This is what's happening in Paul's life right before he writes 2 Corinthians. In fact, in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, Corinthians, if you really pay attention because of the stress, because of everything going down, most theologians believe Paul had a mental breakdown based off of what Paul talked about. And Paul is saying, though I am pressed, I am not crushed. Though I am persecuted, I am not abandoned by God. Though I am beaten, I am not destroyed. For people will see what I have gone through. And they will see Jesus through what I'm going through as I come out of it. But then let's go to the, the end of that chapter again. Knowing what Paul has just been through in life. He did write all of those things. I am pressed, I am not cr 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 crushed. Knowing that he wrote all of these things, think about what this means as he says, that is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. This man was just beat, thrown in prison, most likely emotionally and mentally was having major issues, probably of with, of with a mental breakdown. Panic attacks are happening with him of as he's trying to then focus. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at, at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Think about that. This man has just gone through more than what any of us will ever go through. 
And he says, that's why I don't give up. That's why you can't give up. That's why you have to keep pressing on. Because though it is difficult right now, though it is hard right now, what is to come is better. You will get through this. You will get past this. And the joy and the strength and the encouragement and the hope that comes as you come out of this is so much greater than anything of that I'm in right now. But not only those things, but the eternal life, the reward that comes as we press through, as we press on because let's not forget let's not forget what I said two weeks ago well it's what Jesus said (laughs) so let's not forget what Matthew said what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19 and everyone who has given up houses and brothers or sisters or father, or mother, or children, or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life. Though our life may be tough, though it may seem as if we cannot go on and the easy way out is just saying, God, I can't do it right now. God, I can't tell people about about you right now. God, I know of that you're telling me to go and to tell this person this. God, I know of that I should just not open my mouth, but God, emotionally I'm done. The easy way out would to just be just word vomit on them and just tell them how it is even if it would ruin everything I have been trying to do. God, I just can't do it right now. He will provide. He will mend. He will restore. He will heal. And he will take care of you. I said earlier, it is important for us to take care of ourselves. It is important in those moments that it seems as if life is just crashing down around us. It is important for us in those moments to take care of ourselves. So we have to make time. We have to be able to go to him. We have to be able to go to him and to bear all of our pain, all of our issues, every burden, and just lay it at his feet. Because he doesn't just want us to give, 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 give until we can't go on anymore. He cares about you. He sees you right now. He sees your pain. He sees your issues. He knows what you're going through. And he cares just as much about those issues as he does about the issues of those people that he wants you to go and tell about him. So yes, push through, but no, he cares. He wants you to come to him with your burdens. He wants you to go to him so that he can bring help, so that he can mend what has been hurt, so that he can heal what has been broken, so that he can bring rest where there is emotional, mental, spiritual, physical tiredness. He wants to take care of you too. So tonight, 
We're not going to break out into a groups. We're not going to stand up spread out on our own. Caesar's going to put on a song. And for those who feel as if I am pressed, I am persecuted, I am struck down, I need help. I need someone to help me. The altar is open for you this evening. So let's all stand up tonight. I'm going to pray really quick. And if you would say, I just need Jesus this evening. I'm going through some stuff and I just, I need to spend time with him because yes, I want to serve him with everything. I want to live a life that is not mine, but right now I am struggling. That's what tonight's all about. So Jesus, tonight, you see our needs. You see our hurt. You see our problems. You see our situations. Situations, you see our thoughts, you see our hurt, you see every burden that is on our hearts right now. God, you have been faithful, and you will continue to be faithful in my life. But God, right now, I just need some extra strength. Right now, I need some extra encouragement. So, God, as we come to you, would you be As Paul said, the God of comfort and comfort us tonight. If that's you, the altar is open.